Earlier this year, the two big players in mountain bike suspension, Fox and RockShox, unveiled brand new forks. Both of them have 38mm stanchions and are designed to be even stiffer and more capable than their siblings, the RockShox Lyric and Fox 36. I've been back to back testing these forks over the last few months and I've been using the Motion Instruments suspension sensors to shed a little more light on how they perform. And in this video, I'm gonna let you know which I think is the best. But before we get into all that, I must thank our kit sponsor for this video, Freewheel. They provided all the kit I'm wearing in this video. And if you like what you see, check out the links in the description below. The Fox 38 is available with 160 to 180 mil travel, whilst the 2021 Fox 36 is now confined to 150 or 160 mil. So unless you want a 160 mil travel fork, you don't really have a choice as to which you go for. Meanwhile, the Zeb is available with 150 to 190 mil travel, while the Lyric is available with 140 to 180. So with RockShox, there's more of a choice between the Lyric and the Zeb, depending on how much you prioritize stiffness and weight. Speaking of weight, the RockShox Zeb weighs 2,297 grams, while the 38 is 66 grams heavier at 2,363 grams. Those figures are measured by me, not the brands themselves. Uh, with uncut steerers and at 170 mil travel with 29 inch wheel size. So roughly speaking, both of these forks are about 250 grams heavier than the equivalent Fox 36 or RockShox Lyric respectively. As for stiffness, Fox claims the 38 is 31% stiffer laterally, so side to side, 38% torsionally, so steering stiffness, and 17% stiffer fore and aft, than the equivalent Fox 36. Whereas the Zeb is claimed to be 7% stiffer laterally, 21% stiffer torsionally, and interestingly, only 2% stiffer fore aft than the equivalent Lyric. That last figure was a bit of a surprise to me given that the fore aft kind of flutter when you're smashing into rocks or really heavy on the brakes is probably the main direction you're likely to notice a fork flexing. I asked RockShox why it wasn't stiffer than this, and they said that they didn't necessarily want it much stiffer than a Lyric, in case it was detrimental to comfort, but they admitted that they hadn't actually tested prototypes that were stiffer than this production fork. So I've heard it said in lots of places that a fork can be too stiff and that the four and a half flex can actually have a bit of a benefit in terms of comfort. But personally, I'm not entirely convinced. I've never thought that a flexier fork like a Fox 34 ever feels better than something like a Lyric or a 36. And I've never felt that a stiffer fork like a 40 or a, or a Boxer ever feels worse. So I suspect that RockShox were simply unable to make it stiffer fore aft uh, without increasing the cost or the weight prohibitively because most of the fore aft flex occurs at this little junction between the crown and the steerer. It's worth pointing out that this isn't to say that the Zeb isn't stiff enough and the increase in torsional and lateral stiffness may result in less bending in the legs, which could result in less binding of the bushings, which could make for smoother suspension performance, particularly under heavy braking and when hitting really square edge bumps. Uh, we'll talk about that more in the ride impressions section later. There are articles on bikeradar.com that go into the design details of these forks in more detail, and we'll link to those in the description. But for now, I'll just run through the kind of new and interesting developments that have gone into these forks, as well as discussing a bit about how I've set them up. Starting with the Zeb, it uses the Charger 2.1 RC2 damper, which is very similar to the one you'd find in a Lyric. The air spring, meanwhile, uses the whole width of those massive stanchions, and that wider piston area means you have correspondingly lower air pressures. So I'm running only 66 PSI in this 170 mil travel fork. There is also much more positive volume than you'd get in a Lyric, so it's easier to use full travel. Despite that, I'm currently still running no volume spaces in this fork, but I will pop one or two in for bike park style riding. Just like the recently updated Lyric air springs, the Zeb's air spring has its transfer port, which allows the positive and the negative air chambers to equalize their air pressure right at the start of the travel rather than a few mil into the travel. That makes it easier to set the spring up because you just pump it up to the pressure and ride. You no longer need to compress the fork into its travel to allow the chambers to equalize. However, I do think it compromises the beginning stroke sensitivity of the fork a little bit. 
Moving on to the Fox 38, it has a floating axle design. Now the reason for this is that due to the bike industry's unique approach to quality control, not all 110 millimeter hubs measure 110 mil exactly. So this design clamps the hub against the left leg, then the right leg can self-center before it is clamped to the axle with a pinch bolt. This ensures that the legs remain exactly parallel no matter the width of the hub. And according to Fox, this cuts friction significantly. This version of the 38 uses Fox's Grip2 damper. It has high and low speed compression and rebound adjustment. The main change you'll notice for the 2021 version is that the range of compression adjustment is much narrower. So fully closed on both adjusters is now completely usable Whereas on last year's model, we ran it pretty much fully open most of the time. The 38 air spring is quite interesting too. Instead of the air piston sealing against the stanchion wall, it has a narrower air sleeve inside it. And this reduces the piston diameter to the same as a Fox 34. This reduces the contact area between the piston and the sleeve, which should reduce friction somewhat. And also because the air chamber kind of mushrooms out to the whole width of the stanchion at the top of the air spring, that means you effectively have more volume relative to the diameter of the piston. And what that means is that you have a more linear kind of coil-like spring curve all the way through the travel, like you'd get with a, a dual crown fork, which obviously has much more space for uh, air volume, but it's a way of kind of packaging that into a single crown fork. So because of that, it's a bit softer at the start of the stroke than the Zeb, but it has a bit more support in the middle of the travel. It also has little bleeders on the back of the legs, and these are to release excess air pressure, which can build up in the lowers, and this pressure can make the fork disproportionately firm at the start of the stroke. A bit like if you have a coil spring and you wind on too much preload onto it. This is only going to be a problem if you have quite a dramatic increase in altitude or temperature. But to be honest, I use them quite often and I usually get a little squirt of air coming out of them. So it's nice to have. I've also been using them as a bit of a, an additional tuning option, but we'll talk about that at the end. As for settings, I'm currently running 100 PSI in this fork with one volume spacer, and that gives me plenty to push against in corners and under braking, but still allows me to use all the travel. I arrived at these settings in the usual way, just through trial and error on the trail, but I then tested them on a spring tester, which Mojo Rising was kind enough to let me use, which plots the force against the travel of the fork. And that revealed that the Zeb is firmer with these pressures in the first 40 or 50 millimeters of its travel. But then after that and into the middle third of the travel, the 38 is a bit firmer. And that confirmed two things, which is that I had set them up in a way that's sort of comparable. One fork is not simply softer than the other. And also it confirmed what I felt on the trail, which is that the 38 sort of eases into its travel a bit easier at the start of the stroke, but has more to push against deeper into the travel. You could of course add volume spaces to the Zeb to get the force to ramp up towards the end of the travel, but these only really affect the final portion of the stroke. And I was already struggling to use all the travel with the Zeb, even set up as it is. And this is the main difference between the two forks in my mind. To me, what this means in terms of ride feel is that the 38 feels a bit more kind of stuck down onto the trail. It spends less time in the very beginning of the travel, which means it has a bit further to extend into holes and off steps and things, which means that the front wheel is more in contact with the ground, and it tracks the ground better. So it feels like you have a bit more traction. I really noticed this on rough sections of trail where you're not braking, because in that situation, the fork can spend a lot of its time in the very first part of its travel. This was confirmed by the Motion Instruments suspension telemetry, which showed that on one particularly rough but not very steep test track, I spent 14% of my time in the first 10 mil of the travel on the Zeb, compared to 11% on the 38. Subjectively, I also noticed that the Zeb was kind of more keen to extend all the way to the very beginning of the stroke and a little bit more abrupt when compressing from the very start of its stroke. And I noticed this before looking at the data. Now, RockShook says that its 2021 air springs are designed to ride higher in their travel, 
which is true, but only if you're already in the beginning part of the travel where the spring is firmer. Now, personally, I think that if you want the spring to ride higher when it's already in that part of the travel, you'd probably be better off just with a higher bar height or maybe a longer travel fork. Trying to raise the ride height by making the spring firmer at the start of the stroke is in my opinion, not the best way to do it. And once you're deeper into the travel, such as when you're braking hard, it's the 38 that rides higher in those situations. For me, that makes the 38 more predictable because it has that linear buildup of support as you get deeper into the stroke. While the Zeb has a tiny bit more of a, of a lag before the force builds up towards the end. And I have noticed the Zeb occasionally moves a bit more suddenly through the middle of its travel, particularly when hitting big G outs under braking. And that just makes it feel a little touch less composed. There is an upside to this though. You can see on the motion instruments data that both forks have about the same average position or dynamic ride height and both are using similar amounts of travel. However, the Zeb is recording more total up and down movement on the same tracks. And according to the little accelerometer that the device has on the top of the fork, it transmits a little bit less vibration through the fork. This could be because the Zeb has a slightly softer spring rate in that middle part of the travel where you spend a lot of the time. Or it could simply be that the Zeb is lighter on damping but subjectively, I actually found the 38 to give me a smoother ride. Um, on the same test tracks, I was able to get further down the track before I noticed my hands getting sore. Now, the accelerometer is way more accurate than my hands, but it could be that the data it provides is not directly relevant to perceived comfort. Or it could be that because the 38 feels a little bit more settled into its travel and more supportive, I was simply more relaxed while riding it. Either way, I could have opened up the damping on the 38 to make it more comfortable if I wanted to, but I just didn't feel the need to do that whilst I was testing. I've actually been running the Zeb more or less fully open on low speed a lot of the time to try and get it to engage its early travel a bit better. Uh, but of course that will exacerbate that lack of support in the middle of the travel too. Now that I've really poured over the motion instruments data, I think it would be interesting to go back and test with the Zeb a bit more closed on compression and the 38 a bit more open. But as I said, based on perceived feel, I already found the 38 to feel more supple and more comfortable. So you'd end up with a different trade-off there in terms of suppleness versus support, but it, you'd still find that the Zeb was firmer in the beginning of the travel and softer in the middle of its travel. Rebound wise, I've got the Zeb 10 clicks from closed, which is just over halfway through the range. That's about as fast as I can run it before it starts kind of overextending and feeling a bit too lively. On the 38, I'm currently running it just one click out from closed on the high speed, but 14 clicks out on low speed. That makes it really fast and supple over kind of small chatter, but quite controlled when returning from really deep in the stroke. I'm not saying that this is the best setting, it, it's quite extreme but it does feel pretty good to me. So the motion instruments data tells me that the 38 is rebounding faster most of the time, but that the fastest maximum rebound speeds are occurring with the Zeb. And that's not surprising given how firm I've set the high speed rebound on the 38. I am pretty happy with the rebound feel on the Zeb just using the low speed adjuster. Um, but I do think it's quite fun to experiment with low and high speed rebound separately on the 38, if that's what you're into. If you're not, then you can just use the high speed re rebound setting that Fox recommends and then experiment with low speed from there. I would say, however, that the rebound settings that Fox suggests are a bit on the slow side, in my opinion. One last thing I've been playing with on the 38 is actually creating a vacuum in the lowers by compressing the fork before pressing the bleed buttons. And this sort of sucks the fork a little bit further into its travel. So you don't get as much travel because it can't extend all the way, but it does make the start of the stroke even suppler. And for flatter trails with lots of roots, I've been enjoying this setup quite a lot. 
I don't want to sound too harsh on the Zeb. I've been really focused on how it compares to the 38 and the differences between them. I don't think the Zeb is a bad fork, but rather that the 38 is really quite special. As for how these burlier forks compare to their lighter siblings, I haven't done the back-to-back -back testing yet because I've been focusing so much on how they compare to one another. Um, there have been times where I've sort of stuffed it into a catch berm and thought that the steering feels really direct, but it could just be placebo because they look so visually um, kind of aggressive. Um, and I also think that when you are stuffing it into a corner, most of that flex you feel comes from the tire and the wheel. So I'm not convinced about how much difference a few percent increase in stiffness really makes, but that's a test for another day. It's also worth pointing out that this Zeb Ultimate retails for £969 in the UK, whereas the 38 there cost £1,300. So money no object, I'd have the 38. I think it's the best single crown fork I've ever tested, but in the real world, I'm not sure. In fact, given how cheaply you can buy a 2020 model year RockShox Lyric, which I think actually has a slightly better air spring, I think that's the one I would actually buy with my own money. Let us know what you think about this style of fork in the comments below. And I'd also be really interested to know what you think of this style of review. Did you enjoy getting into the nerdy stuff or was it a bit too technical? Um, if there's anything you don't understand, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click the little bell so you get notified when we upload a new video. Thanks very much.